Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Star Ward. I'm in Australia today. This is a 2016 distilled, distilled in 2019 bottled single cast 1840, 246 bottles, 55.7%. And it's a Kirsch whiskey exclusive bottling for Germany. Look at this cork, 100% plastic. I think that's okay. So, um, What's really interesting is the fact that this was bottled in 2019 and it's now the end of 2020 and this bottle just hit the market, um, in Germany at least. Did it take that long to get over here? Probably. Now, what I'm going to compare it to is something that also just hit the market here in Germany. is called the Star Wars Towning. Um, this is something that was in November of 2019 uh, around the world 4,000 bottles a 0 0.5 liter and the towning is actually here not from Portugal but from Australia so David Vitali actually started the Star Wars distillery in Melbourne in 2007 everything here is um, double distilled they use Australian barley they use brewers yeast and they try to use Australian casks Australia has a bl blossoming, a, blue, uh, um, a flourishing whis a wine industry, so why not use those casks, which I think is great. Now, um, there's two things here that I'm a little bit anxious about, worried. Um, first of all, the word towning, I think towny, I think of port from Portugal. And actually here, this is from the um, E. Lunda, that's Y-A-L-U-M-B-A -A distillery, and uh, distillery winery actually in um, Australia where they get half of their barrels and the other half of the barrels they get from the cooperage. So this is not from that area. And it's very evident as well with this bottle. This is actually a first fill Apera barrel. Do you know what Apera is? Neither did I. So back in September of 2020, no, uh, 2010, <laughs> back in September of 2010, the Australian um, wine industry was so gracious to stop using the word sherry for um, products distilled, or sorry, we don't distill sherry, for products um, made in Australia. So that is actually a geographical indicator. You cannot have Parma, you cannot have any, many, many Champagne. All those words are only for special regions, uh, special products. And so um, the Australians decided not to use the word cherry anymore and they started calling it Apera, which I thought was very, very interesting. So um, I'll read the label here. It says Australian whiskey, yay, single cast release, yay, 55.7% ABV, single malt, filled 2016, number of bottles 246, not that many. So this whiskey has been fully matured in a unique first fill Australian Apera 225 liter um, barrel number 1841 and bottled at cast strength exclusively for Kirsch import. Now, every first fill um, single barrel is unique, isn't it? Hmm. All right, very good. So, now, um, I think it's very interesting to compare these two. I think um, Star Ward is doing great things. I love the concept of, hey, let's use products from Australia. Let's use the barley from Australia. Why do we have, we don't need to import our barley from Scotland to Australia. Australia has their own little um, corn, there are little grains that they like to grow there. Um, they have wonderful, wonderful wines in Australia. Mwah, I'd rather have an Australian wine than a German wine any day of the week. And so why not use those barrels because they're there. And um, David Vitali was actually inspired <clears throat> by Mr. Lark um, from in Tasmania to do this. If you look at the color here, um, this has a little bit of a darker color. This is a little bit more of a bronze. This should be more of a towny, and this should be more of a, a pera. So, on the nose. Now, I do get something called sherry, but I would say it's more of a mix between a oroloso. I get a little bit of that um, typical <sighs> spice. But I'm also getting something more along the lines of a leather, a very fresh leather. Um, this has, there's a little tiny touch of a red wine moment. I don't know where that came from. And it is, um, 
the alcohol is 55.7%. It's like, oh, really? Nah. And I'm getting something which is very, very sweet. Um, sugary, caramel, toffee, sweet. So it says here, and I'm really not getting this, caramelized. Yep, got it. Pears, orange, apricots, and hints of roasted nuts. Ah, yeah, I get the nuts. All right. Huh. I just read the second part, and I've never done that before. Let's see if that now influences my tasting notes. Cheers. Mmm. There's something grows on you. Um, I did not like it the first time I tried it. And the second I tried time I tried it, I was like, oh, that's better. And the third time I tried it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And the fourth time, I was like, wow, there's a lot there. It's complexer than I thought it was. There's this beautiful, beautiful sweetness. It's almost like a peach cobbler type of sweet. Have you ever had a real peach cobbler from Georgia? Um, it's so rich that you can, it's almost like a pecan pie moment where you can eat one slice and then uh, it's enough. And a good, good, really great peach cobbler has that same effect with me at least. It's like, okay, I'll have that little bit and then uh, second, no thank you. Um, but then the alcohol actually comes and you realize that it's not that old. This is three years old, people. Um, 2016 to 2019, that's not old. In my German video, I compared it to a 13-year-old Glen, um, Glendrona. This was, of course, better, but it was still... Well, the reason I did it, because it's the same price. I paid, by the way, 89 euros 90. So this is a 90 euro bottle here for 0 0.7. This is a 0 0.5, and I paid 80, 74. So it's 150 um, euros for, for a liter, liter of this. Um, so this is actually cheaper in the price. Um, and at the end, it just, it does this, and it goes back up, and it's got a, it's, it, the, the, it, it's very, very unique at the end. There's a woodiness without estrogens, and there's no moment, um, there's, it's, it's fresh cut wood. All right, um, I'm going to do what I, um, wanted to do, it's actually diluted down a little bit. 55.7% is, mm, I allow myself to dilute anything over 50% all the time. Sweet wood, sweet potatoes, cherries, honey, malt. So the sweet potato is there, but it's not distinct. It's like a, f a sweet potato um, French fries. A little bit of a, has to be fried sweet potatoes. Very thin sweet potatoes, very fried. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. What really surprises me is the sweetness that's in the underlying spirit of this whiskey. Very, very sweet. Like a great sweet wine. It's not overly sweet, but it has an underlying sweetness that just carries through the whole time. This is a very unique bottle. I actually like this a lot. A lot more than I thought I would. Um, mmm. Now, by the way, the Tony, I'm not a great fan of the Tony, by the way. So what happens is you have a nice little moment, and then there's a lot of alcohol, and then at the end it just kind of tapers off again. 48%, um, by the way. Very unique barrels were used here. A lot of wood in both of these. I'll talk about that in a second. Mm-mm. Much, much better. A lot of estrogens. As well. mm, that woodiness is here. Very, very evident. Oh, but now it's going back to the sweetness, going back to the fruitiness, going back to a nice, nice, um, um, balanced moment. So like, like, oh, ah, mm. 
And this is like, no, nice. With water. Without water, the alcohol just kind of kicks in and I, I need a little bit. Um, I think, um, I have, I'm just thinking out loud here. Star Wars might have a problem with their um, warehouse. What do, I mean, what do I mean with a problem? Now, I know in Kentucky and Texas and wherever else you are in this world, um, most hot places in the world, Taiwan and India and so on, that you have extreme temperature changes between night and day. And that's something also that David um, Vitali talks about is the four seasons in one day in Melbourne. Um, there's a lot of temperature changes and so on and so on. And um, what happens is if the higher up the casks are in your warehouse, the more heat they get and the more um, heat driven that process of wood is. And the wood is transferred very strongly into this whiskey. Now in Scotland you have, oh look, it's thir thir it's 11 degrees Celsius during the day and that's 8 degrees Celsius during the night and that's basically 10 months of the year. Um, very, very stable temperatures and so the wood doesn't really interact with the whiskey as strongly and as intensively as it does in Texas, Kentucky and probably also Melbourne, Australia. And so what happens is after three years you're starting to get an over-oaked product. Hmm. And so you actually have to think about where do I put my whiskey in the warehouse so that it isn't over oaking after three years so that you have more complexity, you have more depth, you have more of a, of a rounded product. Now this is good, but I think if you would have let it fit in the cask for another three years, it would have been, eh, it's like chewing on sawdust. And that's a shame because a six year old product can be excellent compared to a brand new three year old product. Um, if I ask my YouTube friends, hey, how much would you pay for a three year old whiskey? And they would go, what do you mean three years old? I say, yeah, three year old um, a single malt. How much would you pay? I don't know, 30 euros? I said, what about 90? <laughs> no, are you crazy? And that's a little bit the problem here. Yeah, you're paying 90 euros for three year old whiskey. So that's basically 30 euros per year. Um, the guys over there, Phil at the Whiskey Mystery, he would love this in his Excel sheet. Um, to have a three-year-old whiskey with a price tag of 90 euros. Um, he does great, great Excel calculations with the price per year and anything above 10 is outrageous. And um, 30 is just like out of the ballpark. It's just amazing. <coughs> the taste? I'm going to give this a C++, almost a B-. minus. No, nah, it's not a B minus. It's a C plus. Let's go for C plus. The value for money, ah, it's a C minus. Now, the problem that you will have, 246 bottles, Germany exclusive. You might have a friend over in Germany, not me, but a friend that might be able to buy this bottle for you and give it to you, hand it over, be a mule um, one day. Um, I think Kirsch has done a great job of um, promoting Star Ward in Germany. And I'm really looking forward to further products that make, that make their way from Australia all the way over to Germany, maybe all the way over to US, maybe all the way over to UK, wherever you're watching this from. Um, yeah, wonderful. Colony, if you ever get your hands on it, I'm not sure. Half liter bottle, that's a little bit too woody for me. But this, um, the single cast, well chosen, well done. And David Vitali, I think you're doing a great job down there in, uh, in Melbourne. Keep up the good work and all the best for you. Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys, 246 bottles of this uh, worldwide, <laughs> German-wide, um, that's the way it is. So my slogan is, basically, I taste whiskey you'll probably never ever see. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, share this video on social media if you'd be so kind. Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, wherever you want to do. And um, tell your friends about this crazy guy tasting great whiskey you might never see. All the best. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.